Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another Royal News video. So I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. It was nice for us. We managed to take the dogs out who are both fit and healthy now back to pulling on the lead like a maniac. But we took them for a new woodland walk, which was lovely. It's up near Epsom and it seemed to be a lion, witch and a wardrobe theme from what we gathered. Now, we have been having extreme weather in the UK. Now, I know I make some of you guys laugh, especially states in America that get tornadoes, for example. When I say extreme weather in the UK, this is why Brits moan about the weather. It's because we will get all four seasons in the space of five minutes. Now it's spring here, it's beautiful, you open up the curtains in the morning, it's blue sky, it's warm so you hang your washing on the line and you think brilliant, this is fantastic. Skipping up the road with your sunglasses on, you've got a sleeveless top on or the dogs are with you and then bang, out of nowhere you are soaked through to your knickers, you're then being hit by hailstones the size of your thumbnail, which hurts. The dogs are miserable pulling you left, right and centre, there's thunder and lightning going off. By the time you get home you look like you've been through an actual war zone and then the sun comes out again. So this is why British people moan about the weather because it's very frustrating to say the least. Anyway, that's enough about my weekend and weather dodging. Let's talk about the royals. I'm going to start this video off with a royal that I don't normally speak about very often, but that's because his engagements have been scaled back somewhat because he is of the older generation. On Sunday, there was a special ceremony held in honour at the Wellington Barracks for the Duke of Kent. At 88 years old, he has stepped down as Colonel of the Scots Guards, a position that he has held for 50 years. The Duke, who was the late Queen's cousin has dedicated his life to serving the crown and due to his age and a few health conditions he is gradually entering retirement. He has lived through three coronations and walked behind the coffin of two monarchs. He's loyal, he's respected and well liked by everyone and I've got a little clip to share with you of his send-off which actually strangely it might be the bagpipes, it might be because it reminds me of the Queen and Philip but it did get me just a little bit teary-eyed. I thought that that was quite the perfect send off for him. I can imagine it could be a little bit emotional because he's held that position for so many years, but I'm sure that he knows it's in good hands because the King has now asked for the position to be moved down to another Prince Edward. Yes, both Dukes are actually Prince Edwards and that is of course the Duke of Edinburgh. I am in no doubt that he will respect and honour the role with the same dedication as his predecessor. And of course, it's not just the name that these two have in common, their commitment to a life of service and duty and honour, not just to the crown, but to the country and to the Commonwealth realms. They are both loyal to their family, to their oaths and to the monarch. All qualities that seem to have skipped a prince from the younger generation. And we all know who I'm talking about. A prince that shows no integrity and a definite lack of loyalty, it would seem to even his own legal team. Harry has been caught out leaking confidential information regarding his security claim against the Home Office back in November last year. Harry emailed Mr Johnny Mercer, an MP who is the UK's Veterans Minister. Now it's not Harry's first offence either at leaking information to people that he shouldn't because back in 2022 when he was fighting to have his security reinstated, yes this court case has been going on for some time, he got information leaked to Tim Robinson, who is a former army major who now spends his time rather than protecting the country. He protects clients' reputations as a public relations strategist. Harry's lawyer got heavily slapped down for the breach, especially because she refused to apologise and she left it a week before the judge was even informed. 
Well, this time it causes more embarrassment for Harry's legal team because they were the ones that had to tell the judge. Sorry, our client has been running his mouth off again outside of the legal circle that he should not have been. And I don't think I need to remind you guys the fact that Megan got caught out embarrassingly lying to a judge. Oh, sorry, she didn't lie. She forgot that she had given lots of information, several chapters and paragraphs to the authors of Finding Freedom. These two leak more than a southern water pipe. Now what is also interesting with Harry choosing this particular MP to be leaking information from his security court case to is the fact that they were on friendly terms. You can see that he is here pictured laughing with Harry and Meghan at the Invictus Games but given his position as being the UK's veterans minister you wouldn't think anything too much of it other than not long after these Invictus Games it was announced that the UK government with obviously Mr Mercer headlining it are putting in the bid to hold the 2027 Invictus Games and our government has pledged 26 million to hold them. Now, I find this extremely infuriating given the fact that on the streets we have more homeless veterans than ever before. We have more of a mental health crisis going on for these people that serve their country that are just left to live in states of poverty. Not only that, Barracks and family accommodations are well below par. There are so many people that are now calling the whistle on the way that they are forced to live. These are people that are serving our country and risking their lives every single day, not just in our countries, but also abroad. I would suggest that Mr Mercer actually perhaps rallies the government to invest a lot more money into our veterans and our serving military personnel. Now, what makes it more offensive to veterans, and the reason why I've got to be in my bonnet, as I'm sure it will aggravate some of you, is that he said that Britain and veterans owe the Duke of Sussex a great debt. Yes, I'm not joking. In fact, I will quote it word for word. He has done so much to improve veteran care in this country. The nation should be extremely grateful for the work he has done and the work of the Invictus Games Foundation. I'm sorry, what? Can you say that again? The British, <laughs> British veterans owe the Duke of Sussex a great debt because he's done so much for veterans care. Look, the Invictus Games is great. It's brilliant. You know I'm a massive supporter of it. I think it's wonderful. I think what it does for families, for the veterans, the support networks is great. But let's not pretend that Harry and Meghan aren't slowly beginning to destroy people's goodwill towards it. I'd imagine they've had a massive dent in donations because of it turning into the Meghan Markle fashion show. Meghan needs to take a back seat. Invictus Games needs to tell her to take a back seat and not start marching in front of veterans wearing flip-flops and shorts that were like hot pants. From behind, Megan's jacket was longer than her shorts. She literally looked like she was marching from behind in her knickers and a blazer like when Britney Spears got married. It was completely inappropriate. She's not a veteran. Harry should have been walking in front of them if anyone was going to do it. She could have walked alongside him, perhaps, as his wife if she needed to be the centre of attention, which, as we know from the recent polo game, that's a given. But this is about respect for the veterans. And I'm sorry, Megan's outfit and the fact that she was in front of them, acting like the people were applauding her, was disgraceful. And I think it was a really bad call on the Invictus Games. But the Invictus Games in itself, these are teams of staff that work all year round, organisers, people that get together, multiple organisations that team up, that get the Invictus Games together. Harry and Meghan fly into it, turn up for the camera crew, which I'd like to point out, they've also turned the last two years of Invictus Games into their own cash cow for Netflix. This money isn't going towards the Invictus Games and the veterans. This is about making Harry and Meghan richer and they are using the veterans. Not only that, Harry attacked the Queen, the head of the armed forces. He's done everything. He and his wife have done everything to try and tarnish the royal family, the Queen, the King, the Queen's Commonwealth legacy. They did Netflix, they did Spare, they did all of these different documentaries. We've got Oprah, the list is endless of all the times that they have tried to attack the monarchy, which is very much part 
of the military family. Not only that, Harry has turned his back against the things that he'd learnt in the military and so many people, people that worked alongside him, that served alongside him, officers that trained him, has said what he has done, the things that he said about his kill count, the Taliban, throwing other officers under the bus for the special treatment that he got, getting away with drugs testing, it has definitely brought shame onto the army. Harry has done that. But yes, veterans in the UK owe Harry, the Duke of Sussex, a great debt. I think the next time Mr Mercer is at an event talking to veterans about what he's actually going to do to improve their lives, I'd love for someone to ask him about why is it exactly that I should be indebted to Prince Harry, please? Could you explain that publicly? Because I tell you what, I think we'd all like to know. Now, the fact on top of this that Harry has leaked information, he's gone against his lawyers, done it behind his own lawyer's back, as I said, that boy has no loyalty, and he has given information to Mr Mercer regarding his security court case. You've got to think, for what purpose? Is he trying to lobby MPs to try and put in a little bit of backdoor pressure? Harry is not going to stop to try and get his security, taxpayer-funded security, reinstated. And it also looks suspicious, the fact that the UK is clearly going to win the bid to host the next Invictus Games with a £26 million grant going towards it from our government. Is there some sort of shady backhander going on whereby Harry says, I'll give you the next Invictus Games as long as you can lobby Parliament to try and push to get my security paid for? It's certainly something that is raising eyebrows and I think it does need looking into. We know that Harry and Meghan wouldn't think twice of getting a charity to pay for their extortionate costs so they can live like millionaires. So again, those two using the government's money to then fund their lifestyle, why they attend the games, those two wouldn't even think twice about it. And as we've seen from Harry's behaviour over the last few years, he clearly seems to think that the world, the royal family, UK taxpayers, everybody owes him something. There is something dodgy. Everything these two do is shady as hell. Now, in some positive news, Harry <laughs> has definitely lost the case. We knew that he'd lost it in February. They said that they are not overruling Ravik, that Harry has lost his security because he quit the UK. He quit being a member of the royal family. He is allowed security when he comes to royal engagements and events, and he can apply to have security when he comes to the UK, but he has to give fair notice and there's no guarantee that the Met Police or Scotland Yard will be able to give it to him if he is not attending royal engagements. But in a slight loophole, which is a bit frustrating, but the judge was not playing games, Harry's legal team put forward a complaint that some of their arguments, some of the paperwork that they had requested, information from the government office, didn't give the information to them in a short enough time frame, for which the judge turned around and said, whilst I don't think that they did this on purpose, you are correct, I will give you a discount on some of the fees that you have to pay. But Harry's legal team were demanding a 60%. Now, this is the money, the reimbursement for UK taxpayers. This is Harry that didn't want to put any costs, do you remember that, towards the UK or the UK public, but spent the last three, four years suing His Majesty's government, which obviously, of course, comes out of the taxpayer's purse. But the fact is, Harry lost, I'm only going to pay 40% of that taxpayer money back. The judge said, no, you can get a 10% discount. So Harry still has to pay 90% back, which is well, I'd imagine, over a million plus his own legal fees. On top of that, because he decided to sue the mail as well, because they were the ones that revealed that Harry was trying to secretly claw back his full-time taxpayer-funded security, they, were, they told the world, and of course the public were outraged, saying, you quit, why should we pay for you and your wife and what you get up to? That's when Harry's team put out a counter story saying, oh no, he, he had full intentions of paying for it. So Harry said that they'd slandered him and besmirched his good character by saying such a horrendous thing. Well, he had to pull out, I think it was a mere hours before he was due in court because he had no evidence to back up his claims. So he had to pay 750,000 towards them, plus again, his own lawyer's fees. So that's well over two million pounds he has wasted in litigation. 
So much for Harry not wanting to be a burden on the UK taxpayers. Do you know what he's doing now? Well, naturally, it's Harry. The fact that he's just lost over £2 million in litigation fees, he's not stopping. No, now he is going to the Court of Appeal. He wants the judge's decision overruled. So Harry is going to appeal to have his appeal turned over. Honestly, it's absolutely bonkers. But I really hope that no more taxpayers' money gets used to fight the petulant Prince, why should UK taxpayers have to pay for him to have little meltdowns and tantrums and trying to sue His Majesty's government? Harry, at this point, seems like he would be better off spending £2 million on actually maybe, perhaps finally, going to see a decent therapist. Now for my final story, it's not about jam. I'm gonna save that one for you for tomorrow's video, lucky you. No, this video, we're going back to Miami. This story is about the new and exciting world of polo, filmed for Netflix with Harry, not just being in front of the camera, but also behind it. A show that I can imagine that is going to bore the socks off of everybody that is not interested in polo. But something that is interesting, and luckily I've got lots of footage and extra clips for you, is watching Megan's body language with everybody over the course of the two days. Now that should be made into a documentary in itself because I'm sure people would actually find that genuinely fascinating. It seems that Meghan was more than happy enough to wrap herself around absolutely everybody over the course of a couple of days whilst filming this polo documentary with Netflix except her husband when the cameras weren't rolling. Now what I do find a little bit odd is how tactile she was with Delphina. It seemed really, really bizarre to me. Now, my thinking of it is, we've seen this before, Megan did this with Jessica Mulroney as well, exactly the same way. Narcissists don't just manipulate their partners, they manipulate their friends and everyone around them. I think it's like she's trying to make herself look vulnerable, almost childlike to get those sort of hugs and look after me. I mean, as I said, in one photograph, she's literally like, mummy, uppies, uppies. It's uncomfortable to watch because of the way that we know that Megan does actually behave. We know that this is an act like everything else, especially when we'd only seen a matter of hours or the day before when it was the trophy ceremony at the match. Megan literally would not let the chair of the board of Centre Bali, Dr Sophie Chaduka, anywhere near her husband for a photograph or even near the trophy. Now, I'm sure Megan probably associates the two things in a similar category, but it wasn't just me that had picked that up. Everybody picked it up. Newspapers ran the story because it was incredibly rude. She didn't just bark at her three times, come over here, come over here, come over here. She even, when she got Dr. Sophie next to her, look at this photograph. She's hanging onto the trophy and she's turned her back to her. This wasn't just about getting her in the middle of the photographs, like some people said. Meghan was absolutely rude to this woman. And Harry even looks like he's cringing a little bit because he's looking over at Dr. Sophie. And not only that, she pushes and shoves Harry out of the way. In another clip that's been released, Meghan uses her elbow to shove Harry out of the shot. This is when another polo player is there and Meghan decides that she wants to kiss him after Harry's given a hug. She's like, whoa, 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 you're blocking me. Harry move out the way. She shoves him with her elbow. She gives him a kiss and you can tell Harry just has a flicker of being slightly annoyed. I don't think he's annoyed that she's kissing him. I think the fact that she's just quite clearly elbowed him to move out of her way. She then touches him now and this is where I think he was annoyed. Look at the way she's touching his arm and he twists and turns away from her. That is because I think he was just annoyed, like, don't touch me. And he bends over and Megan pats him on the back like you'd wind a baby or you'd give a dog a treat. Who's a good boy? Oh, who's a good boy? And Harry gets up and then she drags him off the stage. And she does pull him. She does drag him. She is wearing those ridiculous spiked heels. But look at the way her arm is dislocated as she's hanging on to him to the very last possible point with physics. And the woman is actually holding her hand the other side. She is not letting go of him. If I'm coming off that stage and away from the cameras, you're coming with me. There are two very different viewpoints of Harry and Meghan. Camera on them, they're looking loved up. Camera not on them, they are not loved up. I'm sorry, the body language throughout, 
as I said in the other video, I don't think these two are a happy, loved up couple. I think they come together for business reasons. I personally don't even think that these two live together anymore. And that's probably why it's been released that Megan's new cookery program, when it starts, Aro with Netflix, they are hiring another house for her to be filmed in. Bear in mind, they're supposed to be living in that 16 bathroom Montecito mansion and they are not going to be filming there. And they filmed there for Netflix. We saw a tiny, tiny clip of it. I find this all rather suspicious. And I just really do think that these two just come together for events to make it look like a show of unity because they don't want the world to go ha 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 told you so later on that evening they had a dinner at the exclusive hotel which netflix is reportedly paying for i wouldn't be shocked by harry and megan charging center barley the six thousand dollars a night per stay personally but megan's outfit she can look incredibly beautiful when she dresses up at events, and I've never said otherwise, but she didn't look appropriately dressed for this casual, it looks like a smart casual dinner, family orientated polo hotel reception. Okay, I take that back. Maybe inappropriate is the, the wrong words to use. She was incredibly overdressed. This dress would look lovely at a cocktail party, an evening reception, but for the environment that she was in, she stood out like a sore thumb. But it's not the first time that Meghan has worn, I would say, inappropriate dresses and outfits to go to events. And the reason why she does it is because she wants to stand out. She wants to look special. And the Netflix camera crew are there. She wants to make this about her. But you can tell from the number of people that were around them, which shows up how ridiculous Meghan is dressed again, because people are dressed rather casually, that people don't look too happy to be having photographers and film crews in their faces. I did wedding photography many years ago and the one thing that people always say is please don't take pictures or take footage whilst we're all sitting down having dinner. That's normally when photographers go have a break. Nobody wants the picture of you stuffing a dipped carrot into your face or trying to wipe salad dressing off of your bridesmaid dress. But of course, Harry and Meghan just seem to only think about themselves. And I think that they have taken the film crew there and the people that are there have got to like it or lump it. And I can imagine that they're not too happy and perhaps not everybody wants to be a prop in Harry and Meghan's latest Netflix flop because that is exactly what is going to happen with this show. It is going to go into the bargain bin of things that no one watches on Netflix alongside Aro, alongside whatever cooking, gardening monstrosity, jam making episodes that Megan is going to make to share with the world, where everybody's going to be reaching for that remote and finding something else to click. So guys, that's it for me on this video. I will be back with you very soon. So take care for now. Bye.